Welcome to Property Pillars. This is a show where we talk to property professionals about buy to let investments, mortgages, land developments, and other topics. Whether you're a first time buyer or a seasoned investor, this is a show for you. Are you a first time buyer and you really want to buy your first home, but you're struggling to put together the big deposit? Most people are in this situation and they don't know what to do. Today's show, Property Pillars, we have Mr. Steve Khan of Centurion Global Investments to talk to you about the Help to Buy scheme and how that scheme can help you raise the deposit you need to buy your first home. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you two Property Pillars, Mr. Steve Khan. Good afternoon, Tony. So please tell us about Centurion Global Investments. Um, Centurion Investments um, was a company that was started by myself and uh, Serinda K, my partner. Um, the objective of which was to help people who couldn't normally get onto the housing ladder mm. get onto it. So we started with uh, instruments such as gifted deposits. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when the Help to Buy scheme came out, we jumped on board and became agents because I could see how it benefit us, but more specifically, benefit our customers as well. So tell me, how does the Help to Buy scheme work? The Help to Buy scheme was started in April last year. And how it works is the government have put £8.6 billion into helping first-time buyers get onto the property market. So how it works is, uh, if you find a property, the parameters is up to 600000 Yes. and it has to be a new build. It has to be a new build because the government don't want to tie their money up into old properties that might involve maintenance. Um, so you find an agent such as us, um, and you find a new build property, and the government will lend you 40% interest-free for five years. After five years, it will attract 1.75% interest. And the main benefit is you only have to put down a 5% deposit rather than 20%. So you've answered the second question about the deposit. You only need a 5% deposit. Yes. But how about stamp duty and legal fees? Do I need to pay those as well? Um, stamp duty is, is something that you have to pay. Okay. Um, there's no way around that. Legal fees, again, is something you have to pay. But if the 5% uh, percent deposit was going to preclude mm -hmm. you from buying a property, there are ways that we can get around that. Okay. And also, if I'm a first-time buyer or I'm a landlord with multiple properties, can I use the scheme to buy more properties to rent out? Okay. One of the main um, parameters or restrictions of this of this uh, scheme is that when you complete on your property mm -hmm. from help to buy you cannot own another property right. so if you're selling one mm -hmm. um, to facilitate getting into a help to buy you can but mm -hmm. if you're existing property owner mm -hmm. and you're not going to sell them then you can't okay so if i found a property uh, a developer of my own can i bring them to you for you to facilitate the scheme or do i have to buy from your own portfolio or your own development Oh, well, obviously, we'd like you to buy from our developments. Mm -hmm. However, if you find someone in an, a, a property in an area that where that we haven't got any property, then you can approach a developer, give us his details, and we will endeavour to get him accredited under the scheme, mm -hmm. under our umbrella. Okay. So, talking through an ex typical little example, you know, I'm a first-time buyer. I've got a five percent deposit. I come to you. I've got a good credit rating. Talk me through the process from then onwards okay. up until when I own the flat. Property. Well, the first thing we do, we ask for your credit file mm -hmm. and uh, we ask you to fill out a fact finder. The reason being, a lot of people are surprised when they find that their credit isn't as good mm -hmm. as they think and there are issues that would preclude them from getting a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So the first service we offer is we look at your credit um, re report and we advise you how to get into a mortgageable position. If you're in a mortgageable position, then what we ask for is 3500 initial investment. Mm -hmm. um, that includes your reservation fee to reserve the property. Mm -hmm mortgage um, fees and brokerage fees. Yep. Okay. So can you tell me how much that whole process costs in terms of from when I come to you, £3,500, I pay the legal fees, roughly around how much am I putting aside? Don't forget, I'm also putting a 5% deposit yes. down. I think if you allow for about four to 4500 yep. that will cover you. Okay. About the mortgage, do you help refer me to somebody who can arrange a mortgage for me? Yeah, we, we have a service um, whereby we provide mortgages. We have an, an accountant who works for us, a lawyer, a number of brokers, and uh, we could bespoke the mortgage to suit you. Okay. So if there are any issues that we need to help with, the accountant's there. Okay. Um, so and, and he can help with income that's off the book. For example, nowadays, mm -hmm. what they call now is the SA302, mm -hmm. which shows how much tax you've paid. Mm -hmm. So if you've got off the book income like personal training or something like that, mm -hmm. our accountant will We'll prepare some accounts, mm -hmm. submit them to HMRC, yep. and that will reflect in your SA302, enabling us to get you the mortgage. Lovely. So on approximately, how long would the process take? Six months, a year, 18 months? How long does it take from when I'm all right with the mortgage and I'm ready to go? Okay. If you uh, liked one of the properties we've got in our existing developments, mm. it would take a normal um, conveyancing time. 
which right. is subject to legal um, considerations. Mm -hmm. So if you allow two to three months, then it will be uh, expedited within that time. Okay. From the point of view of some people are saying buying property in your personal name is not as advantageous as buying a property in limited corporate name. From that perspective, what's your view on that, especially with the help to buy scheme involved? Can they use a limited company to acquire the properties with the help to buy scheme or must they have it in their own their own personal name? Generally, names? you have to have it in your own name. However, putting the property in an SPV, special purpose vehicle, is something that we can advise you uh, upon. Mm -hmm. We have structures in uh, BVI, British Virgin Islands, and our accountant can set that structure up for you. Mm -hmm. The advantage is when you go to sell it on, you don't capital gains, you pay share appreciation, which is much less. And also when you buy a property in that vehicle, you don't pay as much stamp duty. But that's not really contingent with what the government had in mind mm -hmm. when they come up with help to buy. I mean, mm -hmm. generally, if you want to put properties in offshore structures, you've mm -hmm. got money, you're looking at ways to avoid tax. And with the help to buy scheme, can I potentially buy the property and then later on rent it out if I wanted to change the terms of the mortgage? Well, the help to buy scheme is, is aimed at, at uh, acquiring affordable housing to people. Mm. So the objective isn't really for you to rent it out. Yes. However, having said that, if you bought the property and then you couldn't afford to live there anymore, mm -hmm. your circumstances changed, mm -hmm. then it's permissible to rent it out for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Generally, once the payments are being made, then you're fine. Okay. So where are your sites at the moment where we can use the Help to Buy scheme? Okay. All our, most of our sites are just outside the gentrification zone. Mm. And the reason why we source them there is this. The gentrification process starts in central London it's moved out. Mm. It's moving out slowly. For example, Ladbroke Grove, mm. my parents came from the West Indies. That was a very poor area. It was slums. Mm. Um, and uh, now it's, I think, seven or eight million pounds wow. for all those properties. So the gentrification process moves out. Mm. Basically, wealthy people move into an area. Mm -hmm. Poor people move out because they sell their properties to them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a rise in services and shops that suit wealthier people. Mm -hmm. And there's a flight of poor people out. Mm -hmm. So this process is moving slowly outside of London. Mm. So we're, look, we're concentrating on areas like Dartford. Mm -hmm. We've got development we're going to uh, finalise uh, in the next week. Um, Watford, we've got 154 units in between Watford and Luton. Um, uh, Bexley in Kent, again, that's outside of uh, the gentrification process. And we're looking at somewhere just outside of Hackney. Hackney's a fine example of gentrification. Uh, properties have gone up 900% in the last four years. Wow. Uh, we actually dealt with a, a lady who bought a property for 40,000. It's worth 350 now. Amazing. So our aim is to secure people properties just outside that zone. So after five years, it would have doubled in value. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining the show. I just wanted to just offer, if there was any tips you can offer the viewers about the Help to Buy scheme and what Centurion Global can offer the first 10 viewers who perhaps saw the show and was interested in contacting you for the Help to Buy scheme. Okay, the, the Help to Buy scheme is, is great mm. and it will enable you to get into a property that you could normally afford. I'll give you an example. Mm. If a property's half a million, traditionally you'd have to put down a 100,000 deposit. Most people haven't got that. So with the help to buy, you only have to put down 25. Most people have. Um, normally, on a 500,000 property, you'd have to qualify for a mortgage for 400,000, which would mean you have to earn in excess of 95. Most people don't. The average wage, I think, is about 28. So uh, with help to buy, you'd have to qualify for 55%, 275, which is uh, earnings of around 45, 46. Well, most people earn that kind of money between them and their partner. So it's, it's a great scheme. You need to get on board if you don't existingly own a property. But further to that, I think the most important thing about property, buy as many as you can now for as little as possible. Uh, an example being, I bought my first flat in 1990 and I paid 50,000 for it. I only, I think I'd saved up 20,000, but I put the minimum deposit, which was 5%, 2,500. If I've used that 20, and that same flat now is worth 300,000. So for 50, it's gone to 300,000. So if I'd have used that 20,000 to buy eight properties rather than just one, I'd have 2.4 million pounds worth of property now of instead of just 300,000. So I think the, the imperative really is to get on board with the uh, help to buy scheme. It's a great scheme, it works for everyone, including the government. But after you've secured that, start buying properties outside of the gentrification process, put down as little, much, as little money as possible, rent it out, move on to the next one. If you'd accumulate four or five properties within four or five years, then that's your pension and that will look after you in old age. That's a great tip. I hope you all got that. That's amazing advice. Thank you so much, You're Steve Kahn, for coming on the show. So if you want more information about the Help to Buy scheme and Centurion Global Investment, send us an email, drop us a line. Steve is available to talk to anybody at info at propertypillars.co.uk. Again, thank you so much, Steve Kahn, for coming thank on the show. Thank you for having me. See you later. Thank you all.